Hey everybody, how you doing? Lee Gersman, Charles Trainer here. How are you doing, Charles? I'm doing great, Lee. And if you are a survivor of the Freeform Rock podcast, you may be eligible for PTSD payments from the law firm of schizzles.nizzle at gmail.com. Look yeah. into it. Yeah. And 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 have Mark Elizabeth Taylor oh, Mark Elizabeth Taylor as my lawyer. Well, he had about as many uh, significant others as yeah. we speak. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing today there with the 17th Brigade? What are we looking into today? Um, we're, we're doing um, an album by Burt Bacharach. Well, you suggested Burt Bacharach, and I oh, thought... Oh, my God, I did suggest and then Bert And then I thought, well... In order to do the Burt Bacharach experience, you really have to be involved with what I was subjected to. I mean, what I was listening to back in the day. Very, very telling why yeah. you said that. Yeah. Because, folks, for the record, before we get into this review, I picked something that was like greatest hiss, hits type style Yeah. thing, and Lee said, no, no. We need to do something that's called reach out, reach out for me. Well, the album Which was called Reach album. Out, and the song was Reach Out for Me. Well, whatever, Reach Out. Yeah, Reach Out for Me. It's his second album. I think Lee Gersman had a hidden alternative, well, an ulterior motive to pick this one over what I picked. I'm sure that yours was probably better, but um, I, I wasn't sure. But um, oh, that's why we did do Pet Sounds uh, by the Beach Boys. Is 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 Pet that is that um to make up for us doing this? I think so because Lee Garsman had to admit that Pet Sounds was way better than he remembered it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't that's rare. Really knows. This episode is going to be more fun, Lee, because you're sipping on a little vodka. Right well, now. I, yeah. He wasn't earlier. Yeah. So therefore, Lee was a little grouchy. Oh, well, I might be even more grouchy or not. I don't admit, know. He didn't want to admit that, God damn, Brian Wilson, he was like 23 then. He produced something. Some shit that neither one of us could have done with all our com our combined years, Lee, which is like a hundred. Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah. Over a hundred. Yeah. What a talent. But let's be fair to Burt Bacharach, Lee. Is he not known as? He's a great songwriter, oh, and and the right? type of music that he's known to do when it's done well is is some of my favorite music. But we're going to find out if this is some of his greatest music. Or and some of that style of greatest music. Or this style of greatest music. Yeah. On this album, which I guess is now just Reach Out. Well, it was back then. I had the old original <laughs> version that I paid, I think, 15 cents for in um, um, the side alley Vincent. of St. Vincent's. A goddamn good deal. Yeah. Especially if you get you a good ounce or so of some Afghan Kush. And yeah, well, smoke this and listen to this stuff. Well, back then I, I had mold on my walls and that gave me enough of a high. So. That works. I mean, yeah. you're and you're still with us, which is yeah. a miracle, yeah. by the way. Um. But Burt Bacharach, I mean, he's most known by anybody under the age of uh, 40, probably, Lee, is from the Austin Powers film series. Yeah. Well, I remember him from I when that, my dad... I don't think that's cool. Go on. I, I just said, I don't think that's cool. Yeah. This guy is a phenomenal songwriter, right, Lee? I remember him from when my dad used to sing me before I went to school... He would sing me Never Fall in Love Again and Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head because they had the lyrics printed of both those songs in the newspaper. So he clipped them out and he would sing them to me. 
One was Dionne Warwick, the other was B.J. Thomas. But I remember my dad singing them, and and then um, you know, okay, so Thomas. that's how that good was. Good old blowjob Thomas. I do know that song. Everybody does. And when we do this review, there's going to be one song, just one, where I was like, oh, okay, I know this song. Yeah. Um, um, I will say without giving more think. away. Not the one you think. I bet. I'm uh, gonna put money on it. Oh no, no, I, I hear you. But um when I got it, I got it thinking I was going to get a good album. I Ooh. I thought that I would would let you know when I bought it for that 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 that, 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 that ten cents and extra penny change <laughs> that that yeah. was that that I was getting <laughs> getting a good album the five cents covered the tax to cover polk streets cafe yeah yeah the five cents was to cover that because back then i'm assuming lee was in the bay area i was lee, yeah was, yeah but i brought this up to lee folks because we'll get into it when we do the review a yeah. person I admire greatly is a huge Burt Bacharach fan. Yeah. I don't want to get into it right now. Okay. But if you know who I am, you'll know who it is. Yeah. Uh, but for those that don't, because we are free form, free listening people, like you, you know a bad podcast. Yeah. Like free, and you don't listen to that, so you listen to a great one in, in Lee Gersman. Yeah. Or you don't listen to ones that drop you like a bad habit, like, yeah, all over you podcast and some of those other people, or people that became ordained ministers and tell you how Eminem's new album sucks, whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. We are LGBT fucking accepting. Yeah. We are re whatever religion you believe in accepting. Uh, whatever on this show, I think I'm speaking for Lee here, because yeah. we don't care what you fucking believe. Just All as long as about... you believe that you need to at least hear a song before you can say how you feel about it. Exactly. You don't have like 14 different marriages, kissing and yeah. making out with people and declaring relationships with people that have children just because you're afraid to get your own home. Yeah. We don't do that here. Yeah. All we do, nor do we attack you with stupid political rhetoric because you don't know how to do Google. Thank yeah. God I have Gen Z kids, Lee. They taught me how to GG, -G, G -G, let me think what it called, GGMF. What do you think that means, Lee? Um, go get more food. In our day, yeah. yeah. In today's age, it means Google that motherfucker. Oh. So I know how to hit Google. And I know how to look up how certain cases work out in American history. So yeah, it is whatever. But I brought this one to Lee. This is, this is how convoluted and weird it is. And I'm so happy Lee has started sipping some vodka. Yeah. With some water. Uh, the other episode. Yeah, well, of course you need water. He, my dad knows that. Yeah. I've you don't snip it up your nose food. like some people do. You drink I've it. I've been drinking a lot longer, drink. which I get uh, attacked by certain people because they say I drink too much. Well, by the way, motherfuckers, when you were sitting at home popping fucking pills. I was in Afghanistan where we had no alcohol and I was locked down for over two years. I didn't drink shit. So I've got plenty of time to make up for that. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean, Lee? Yeah. Right. Exactly. You need to drink a little more heavy, though. You the need to have the, the spirits. I should. I instead should of beer. Light. But I'm sorry. I shouldn't criticize you. I know. Beer just puts on weight. If you yeah. just lit, drink hardcore like liquor, mm. you don't put on as much weight. 
Well, there's some people who already have a lot of weight. And so um, 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 they're maybe trying to drink liquor to, if I not lose the me. weight, Please. they at least don't don't gain more. Lee, I just got weighed in. I'm not talking about you. I know, but I just got weighed in a month ago. Yeah. I weighed 189 pounds. 89? 189. Uh, oh. Um, At 50. Yeah, bitches. I'm doing okay. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Um, I was going to say that's that's worse than my 140 until I realized it's 240. Yeah, at 50, I'm doing all right. Yeah. On my fate, motherfuckers. I'm I wish fine. I could have your weight. It's tough, but you just have to eat one meal a day yeah. and then drink. Yeah. That's all you got to do. All right. Um, but anyway, Burt Bacharach, this was, <coughs> uh, it's interesting today on this album, folks. I picked the artist. Lee picked the album. Yeah. That's why he agreed to do one of the greatest albums of all time in Pet Sounds. Yeah. He agreed to do that just because of this album that he picked. Oh. Uh. So again, you did a Lee on me, but that's okay. Well, maybe I have a great run so far on great out. Yeah, maybe, maybe, or maybe not. Maybe I, maybe I love this. So mm. let's go ahead and knock it out, Lee. All right. Um. <coughs> All right. Well, the um, um, do you want to start? Yeah, it's my turn. Why okay, not? yeah. Um, the, the first song, Reach Out For Me. What do you think of it? Way groovy here, dude. I mean, when you think of the Austin Powers love for Burt Bacharach, you hear it here. I definitely hear some sounds that would inspire Richard Carpenter later on. Yeah, the Carpenters, folks. And I know he did cover a song by them and I hear it here uh, now damn it we get some xylophone this is xylophone this isn't glockenspiel this is xylophone one of the greatest albums in it one of the greatest instruments in history of rock oh man just that alone means I have to love this song well okay let me go more like I like it not love it but it's pretty cool and some mild mini gold here. Decent little opener. All right. So, yeah. I said, it's a nice, pleasant Muzak version of Barry White styled soul with the soulful female backing singers, which I do like. But way well, before Barry, Barry, dude. Come on. I know, but I'm making musical comparisons. Yeah. But yeah. ordinarily, I prefer either lead vocals with background accompaniment or no vocals. It's you if, know you just hit on something big on this album. Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, it's as if they're singing only part of the song, which is the case, but they sound good. It's nice wallpaper background fodder. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. All right. And then the next song, Alfie, okay? <laughs> it's not unlistenable. And some of the campy elements are amusing. It has that cheesy Herb Albert flair to it. And it somehow makes me think it could be background music for a Spanish candy bar, complete with a flamenco dancer waving his cape and saying ole. It's slightly odd to have an arrangement like it for this song, but it's enjoyable for what it is, I guess. What do you think? We're on Reach Out For Me? No, oh, oh. Which one are we on? We're on Alfie. Alfie. All right, so to just a quick shout out of love to Ralph Vieira, that couple grand I sent you, I still wear all your shirts. Anyway, um, it's composed for the film Alfie. Yeah. For that film, Lee? I've never seen it. I Have never you? saw it, but I know of it. Yeah, Michael Caine. 
Yeah. Um, can't say I've seen the film. Probably can't say I ever will either. But there's a lot to be said about this song. Other than it doesn't inspire me to watch that film. But the song itself is apparently Bacharach's favorite piece ever. And I can hear how. Lots of interesting moments. But it's like almost the origin of yacht rock here. So for you rock, yacht rock fuckers that like to stick your thumb up your butt, you know, like the metal fans like do the devil horns, but the yacht rock people like to stick a thumb up your butt, you will uh, love this. Uh, um, it is yacht rock origin. Alfie is good for you, not for me. All right, Lee. That's all something. right. And I will tell you that the arrangements he's doing for these songs are not like the originals. He's taking liberties with arrangements of his own music. Just thought I'd let you know that. He wrote it. Huh? He's allowed. He's allowed. He wrote yeah. It. But what I mean is, but he's not doing the typical thing that you would think. Uh, anyway, um, the next song is Bond Street. What do you yeah. think of that? Well, we broke out of Mellow Gold Land here, thankfully. And I have to say, this is some of the most interesting sounding horns I've ever heard. Nice little interplay with the organ and some nice little strings. But the horns are the standout on this fun and almost comical sounding number. It isn't comical sounding overall, but it's right on that line, which makes it fun. Bond Street is a pretty cool number to me, Lee. I kind of enjoyed this one, dude. Yeah. I put, life can be the opening credits to a television sitcom if one plays this song every moment. It's silly, but it also is the most sensible as far as the arrangement fitting the song type. It's too goofy for me to say it's the best song so far, but it's not any worse than the others yet. Okay, the next song is Are You There With Another Girl? Okay, this could be a track from the 45 RPM single Teach Your Four-Year-Old Kids How to Play the Farfisa Organ, Tooth the Kazoo Annoyingly, and Do Out of Tune Background Vocals in One Easy Lesson. The song itself I quite enjoy, but the arrangement tested my patience. Some of the instrumentation worked really well, but coupled with the sounds that irritated me, it didn't help. I could pass on this. What do you think? Well, this, uh, you just said that. That's like Eric Jordan RMCP totally ripping off Ian Wadley. Oh. On the Eric shows. Yeah, very much, because that's what he does. Yeah. Um, yeah, it sucks, man. Um, we're another girl, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dion Warwick sang this originally, I guess, but that's how people know it, but I wouldn't have known it. But on this album that we're reviewing, it's pretty much instrumental. And you yeah. get, like, the backing vocals only, so it's yeah. extra. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Like for you podcasts who are just ripping off RMCP, but it's still hollow, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, no, I don't really care for this. It sucked really bad. So, yeah. I don't know, man. We're getting to the point of that 15 cents maybe should have came back. Yeah. Or rock all over you podcast, man. Okay, or, at, yeah. or at least they should have given me back five cents to get exactly. one more the album. Five, the five cents. Yeah. Anyway, the next song is The Look of Love. And um, what do you think of that one? No, we're way not right, dude. It should be Are, are You There With Another Girl. No, that, that, that was the one we just did. We didn't do what the world needs now. Oh, wait a minute. Um, um, 
just did Bond. We just oh, did. Wait, oh, 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 wait, wait a minute. Um, because I have that in my list. I, I went. I, we might be on what the world needs now. I can go with that. Um, is is that the one that we we right did? There. Is oh oh well oh I'm sorry oh oh yeah I, I have that I, I I on my list next I just accidentally bypassed it I'm sorry so we're on what the world needs now okay right? okay yeah so let's we go did, with that if so we so, so we didn't off. talk about that when we talked about are you there with them? I'm sorry yeah no I, I I I just I I'm drinking. If anyway, we skip um, the song nobody will care. All right, so well, we're, what the world, what the world is needs now. now is love. What do you think of that one? Oh, I'm so happy to do this first. Yeah. Um. Even though, are you there another girl? Was a decent instrumental, whatever. Um. I mean, how isn't this everyone's favorite karaoke song, Lee? Yeah. Wouldn't you do this in karaoke, Lee? The song? Yeah. Not how Wait. they do it, but the song. Well, not necessarily on this album. Wouldn't yeah. you do this song? Yeah. I mean, on here, it's pretty much an instrumental. We get some vocals, but it's like unknown women singing. As far as I can ascertain, it's not Dionne Warwick. And yes, one of my favorite songwriters, Noel Gallagher, is a massive. See, I told you folks. Yeah. We give it to you. Noel Gallagher loves Burt Bacharach. He's a major Burt Bacharach guy, and I can see why, based off of this song. And hell, dude, even I'm going to say he couldn't couple. He, Noel Gallagher, could not couple come up with something like this no way that little jazzy part on this version is a highlight when you look up Austin's awesome song in the dictionary you're gonna see a picture of what the world needs now that's my final verdict Lou Gersman all right I put and I'm only talking about this version because we're doing the album it started well and I was enjoying it, but little by little, there are things in the arrangement that pop up like glaring colors clashing with the rest of a picture. The fast part I enjoyed until the staccato drumming on the tap set came in, and then I was annoyed. It went from being enjoyable to being a little too over the top for my taste. Okay, now for- I'm not gonna disagree. All right. Now for the look of love. You still would do it on karaoke. Not this arrangement. Okay. All right. But, but anyway, the look of love. Okay. A great song. And thankfully, the over-the-top moments are kept at a comparative minimum. So it becomes the best song so far by default. And I mostly liked it. The high-pitched Farfisa tones could have been eliminated, and occasionally the horn player try to imitate Al Hurt without knowing how to do it, but otherwise it's decent, and I give it more my approval. What do you think? See, I would almost say, other than the fact that I would say, like, I so disagree with you, but I can't quite say that, because unlike all of those other groupie type people, you have not disowned me, so I can't go that far. Yeah. Say that hard. You know, yeah. because the rest of them are, they do what they're told. Yeah. But unlike Lee, who thinks for himself. Yeah. No, I think this song sucks, Lee. I really don't like it. Oh. Um, who, I, I know somebody did like a version of Look of Love 90, I don't know, it was Pet Shop Boys or some shit. It wasn't, I guess it was a different song. This song sucked. I didn't care for it. I did not like it. Have you ever heard it before? No, but I heard the other look of love, and I didn't like either version. Oh, I so, mean, uh, I mean, you know of the song. I mean, it has bossa nova type things. You okay. know what I do get from this is like... I understand. Well, I'm just going to tell you. 
like Clark Griswold when he were, walked into the hotel bar with his white shoes on. And he's like, oh, like, yeah, I'm cool. You know, like, this is so not cool. It's so terrible. Let's go on to the next song. Okay. What do you think of a house is not a home? This was written for a film named after that. Um, and we do get some vocals. We haven't had a lot of vocals, right, Lee? No. Let's be honest. It's a lot yeah. of, like, instrumentals that seems like somebody would have came in later and added vocals to Yeah. It. Um, which is weird. Very weird. Um, why did you pick this? I, I, I just keep thinking. Um, well, this song came to mind because it was the most impressionable on me when I only heard the album once way back then. Well, for 15 cents. Um, yeah, um, I, there is a dude singing on this, so we do get some vocals. I don't know who the fuck it is. I don't think it's Burt Bacharach. I don't know who it is. Maybe a homeless guy on the streets there outside the Burl building. Uh, almost sounds like Robert Lamb from Chicago at times. Pretty sure it's not him. Uh, very piano driven. It's, I enjoy the orchestral breakdown in the center and it works as a nice counterbalance to the mellow piano driven work here, but call me crazy, but I enjoyed this a bit more than the book, the look of love. That that look of love is horrible. It's still a tad corny, but that good sweet corn. Yeah. I used to not like this version of the song, but now I do. But anyway, the best song on the album so far. Granted, Burt Bacharach won't be known as a great singer, but he could have been worse. And I that liked was, his yeah. yes, and I liked his piano playing. And the first part of the song could have been done as the whole piece. But I did like the second half with the arrangement with the full band. The background singers could have been eliminated, but other than that, I thought this was enjoyable. Perhaps the first truly enjoyable song on here for me. I agree. The closest. And we did what the world needs now. Yeah. So, there you go. Okay, um, now for I Say a Little Prayer. Okay, the whole album should have been done like how this song is arranged. No out of place over the top sounding instruments, a consistent and well done orchestration with the song as good as the orchestration and backing singers who don't sing parts of the lyrics. This is the type of 60s pop I like for those who need to know. What do you think? I have to give Bacharach one thing. He knows how to arrange by horns. And based off the melody, I do know the song. But it took until the chorus to be like, oh yeah, I know this one. I knew it by the chorus. And most people probably would. This is another odd instrumental on this record. Because that's how this album is, folks. With songs you know, with very sparse singing. So you have to, like, think about, do I know this? You will. Which I'm thinking, this is a song that someone added vocals to later, which is this whole record, which is strange. And it's odd, but this is a good one for sure. And I challenge you to listen and see when you go, oh yeah, I know this one. Because if you are 50 or older, you know this one. Yeah. Period. Yeah. I guarantee you, you know it. All right. But it, this is an odd album, Lee. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. Sing hardly. It's weird. But okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of The Windows of the World? Yet another instrumental of a Dion Warwick penned Burt Bacharach single. Uh, 
he conducted this work, so I mean, okay. I can honestly say this one didn't ring a bell, but it didn't take away my respect for it. This is some more yacht rocking. If you like yacht rock, check this album. It is like the Elvis Presley of yacht rock. That's all I can say. It's I didn't really care for it that much, but if you like yacht rock, this is your shit. This record. All right. Well, this is really cool and also an example of a great arrangement without extra annoying things to ruin it. This could be the opening song for when someone wakes up in their million dollar home and opens the curtains to see the ocean beach view, which is their backyard. Very cool music. And now for... Uh, so your Yacht Rock mainstay. I didn't saying. think that... There, there were some songs on here I didn't like the arrangements as much. So, ah. so but some I did. So okay. I'm, I'm kind of 50-50 on this All right. album. But this song, 100. Anyway, now for Lisa. Three in a row done well. This time the singers are mimicking the Lawrence Welk school of choral pleasantries. Oh. And it works better than the Barry Whiteettes from earlier. I like the arrangement and it's perfect for restaurant dining. I dig it. What do you think? Restaurant dining and Lawrence Welk. Yeah. Oh my God. Lawrence Welk was like hee-haw in my home. Not allowed to watch. Oh. Uh, well, anyway, on this song, Lisa, well, we know... I do know now who Burt Bacharach's favorite Prince and Revolution member is. That's Lisa. <laughs> uh, an obvious load of love to Lisa somewhere out there. And uh, this setting is rather odd with a male and female choir type vocals mm -hmm. singing on an ode to Lisa. Like mm -hmm. maybe a dude should have just sung it. Yeah. It was weird. It's a nice song, no doubt, but rather odd to hear with this type of arrangement. Yeah. Maybe that makes it worth a listen for some. Yeah. Um, but for me, very sloppy here. If that's your thing, you'll love it. I'm not really feeling it, but some will, that's for sure. And I uh, do hear a fantastic song that really isn't my style. And so I do think it's a great song, really, but I don't like it. Okay. Fine. All right. What do you think of the last one? Message to Michael. Yet another version, I'm sure, didn't end up an instrumental, but that's what we get here. I did enjoy this one more than Lisa, and so maybe choirs are not a good, you know, that's a good thing. No choirs. We don't need that. The arrangement is more to my liking. Yes, it's back to the mellow gold goodness Bacharach can come up with in his sleep back in his day we close out with i'm more of a tune to once again and this is a great songwriter and arranger who maybe didn't always write things that were my speed but there's no dying denying his brilliance like i know he's great but i don't know if i always dig his shit but go ahead lee all right this should have been on side one. It's a reminder of when the songs had arrangements that went a little too much um, for the song. And this time I'm not a big fan of the song either. But that doesn't mean it needed an arrangement to fit what I don't like about it. It's not truly horrible, but the vocals, the Herb Albert imitation flair, it isn't a cup of tea in which I'll take another sip of again much see okay. folks 
I gave Lee a, probably a better album. Yeah, you did. He agreed to do Pet Sounds. Yeah. Because he picked this shit oh. that if you would listen to, it's like, it sounds to me like two thirds of an album. Like somebody yeah. should have been singing, but they didn't. Uh -huh. And it was strange. Kind of like as if um, the group needed to do several different layers of stuff to make the album, and some joker came in before they finished it, and he 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 and brought it to the pressing plant. Yeah, like let's just release like the demos. Yeah. <laughs> make people pay fifteen cents, like Lee Gersman. Yeah. Better down the road. So once again, folks, if you keep track of the Lee Gersman show. I've picked phenomenal albums, yeah, and Lee yeah. typically picks ones that are very out there, but I still did enjoy listening to it. So no matter what, yeah. it doesn't matter. He has better choice in music than Mark Alden Taylor. There you go. No matter what. All right. That's, no that's what, really being low on him now. No, it's not being low on him. That's just being honest. Um, why better, why I mean it's like like um, 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 he must he be really better, bad if, if 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 this is better than him. We well, has better choices than Tim Bream. That has, I will say. Yeah, he has better choices uh -huh. than ninety nine percent of the world. And by the way, even though everything I've sent to Lee is like 100% awesome. No. I'm even better. Uh, you're and even better than... than like 99% better than me. You're better than Tim Bream and Mark Eldon Taylor combined. Shit, that ain't very... That, <laughs> no, no, you're, you're, you're actually pretty good. That's not a very high bar to fucking reach. Yeah. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. Like up to your ankle. But I'm drinking, so I'm saying shit. Me too. Yeah. People should be aware. Yeah. I, I, hey, for those people out there that wonder, no, I still don't like Sammy Hagar. That's yeah. not a make believe thing. Yeah. I don't oh, have an opinion one way or the other. You do too. But I mean, I don't have an official opinion. Well, it doesn't matter if you do love, like, how do I know when it's lovely? No, I don't like that. Great. If it makes you feel great, that's cool. I don't like that. No. When it's love? That's just as, that, no, not, well, there were a few moments of it that were okay, but then it got not good. What is that stupid Bon Jovi album they always fuck with you about? The I'm one, not saying because I haven't heard it these days. I guess so, yeah. Why? Who cares? I guess because I I said some songs were good. So? Yeah. Hey, I mean, Poison could pull uh, a good song out their ass every now and then. Uh, I guess, yeah. Once or twice. Yeah. Like Ouch. One. I don't know which one. Yeah, I don't know either. From Motley Crue. <coughs> John Karabi. Yeah. I don't know. Because Motley Crue 94 destroys Shot at the Devil. What do you think, Lee? I think they're both good. They're both. Oh, that's safe. If you prefer I... to look in the one, which one would you prefer? I, I I do like Shout the Devil better. But 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 only by one percent better. Well that's good enough. I disagree. I think ninety four kills it. But I listen to that more. Shout at the Devil is a phenomenal album. Yeah, I like it. I mean, compared to Doctor Feelgood. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Where Saints of Los Angeles. Yuck. Oh my god. Terrible. What's the one? Rose Tattoo? Whatever that is. Yeah, whatever. I, I don't like that shit. Oh 
Oh my god. Are you looking forward to the new Motley Crue album, Lee? Um If it ever it's comes out. We're gonna it on the Lee show, folks. Yeah. We're gonna tell you the truth. Yeah, I'm not against AI, I'll have to tell you that. Well, I'm not either, but unlike the Freeform Rock podcast, it's gonna blow it like they're in fucking goddamn uh Polk Street in San Francisco. Yeah. Or in Boys Town in LA or the other show, RMCP, that's gonna like brutalize it. We're gonna tell the truth, huh, Lee? Yeah. We're gonna listen to it and we're gonna say what we really think. Yeah. We I, that is a guarantee, folks. I had it in writing on Facebook, which that's all that matters. Yeah. When that fucking album comes out, Lee and I are going to review it. Yeah, we're going to get we're it before they the do truth. it. If we can. We're going to tell you the truth. Yeah. We don't have any fucking. I don't like Motley Crue because they're whatever, or I like Motley Crue. No, we're going to tell you the truth on yeah. this show. Yeah. If it's good, it's good. If it's shit, it's shit. Yeah. And that's what we're going to tell you. Yep. Yeah. And this Baccarat album was pretty much shit. It was but, half. Yeah. Like, if you're into karaoke and you know if the world needs now is love, sweet love, you probably like this album because you can sing along to it because nobody else does. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really well written, right? It's well written. It, it, um, it it had mostly well written songs that weren't fully completely played. Right, which I don't <laughs> understand why they put this out. That's because did you grow up in an area with Muzak back in the day? Yeah, yeah. It it it, it was typical of what they played on the radio, but nobody bought the album. But the record, um, but the radio stations needed albums to play, so they bought it. Uh, well, the other albums I picked, I don't remember them, folks. But if you haven't disowned me because some person in Miami told you to disown me, or a dude in Anaheim burning corn dogs told you to disown me, hit me up on DM and I'll tell you which one I picked. And then you can decide which one was better. Okay. Because I don't remember. Because I'm drunk. I don't know what you're talking about, but I but that's good enough for me. It was a Burt Bacharach, like, greatest hit shit. Yeah, okay. I, I should listen to it just to see what I think of it. Yeah, to hear, like, actual singing. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't know. I thought it was maybe a compilation of this stuff. <laughs> no. Maybe I'm wrong. This one, A, hey, either way, this meant a lot to you, Lee. You bought it for 15 cents. Yeah. And we did it. And that's what we do for the fans. Yeah. The Lee Gersman Show. We do what they beg to hear. Burt mm. Bacharach. Yeah. Whatever the name of this shit was. Yeah. And yes. But I did, if you like Austin Powers, you will know why he loved it. Yeah. I liked it overall, but oddly it was mainly instrumental, which was yeah. weird. Yeah. Okay. Well, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>